Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three teenagers. I believe that your body does want to and is capable of rebuilding and healing itself regardless of what chronic disease you may have. I'm here for you to answer your questions and bring you innovative and cutting edge technology and health solutions to empower you and your ability to reach your optimal state of health. Today, my guest we'll be talking about healing the thyroid and improving your physical energy in order to enhance your mental confidence. I know more than anyone that you really need that strong physical foundation in order to work on your mental growth, whether it's overcoming anxiety and depression, losing weight or detoxing the body in the proper way, and even increasing your level of frequency or vibration in life, you still need that strong physical foundation of health in order to gain the willpower to make the bigger changes in your life. If you're new to following me, I specialize in helping you get there. You can find my health articles, my cutting edge natural supplements, devices, and protocols at acceleratedhealthproducts.com. I dive into an array of health conditions, their causes and symptoms, and how to address them naturally. I have spent thousands of dollars and hours of my time biohacking different supplements, technologies, and diets that don't work, so you don't have to. If you have any health issues you need my help with, you can email me directly through the website. I personally read every one. Accelerated Health Products is the sponsor of this show, so as you support my website, I'm able to bring you more cutting edge content and guests to this show. Today we are going to be diving into how to heal your body and mind and the benefits of living at a higher state of vibration or frequency as a result. So I first wanted to talk about some frequency enhanced supplements that can aid in the process of healing quicker and more efficiently. First is the accelerated keto. This is the only keto supplement that not only kicks you into ketosis within 30 minutes and gets rid of those cravings for sugar and carbs, carbs, but it also has additional fat burning ingredients that help defat and cleanse the liver. Many of you may be suffering from fatty liver. Keto on its own helps, but this gets you the results much quicker. And also you'll feel that mental clarity that you haven't felt before, the brain fog lifts, your energy produced at the cellular level is 10 times more than when you're eating a high carb diet. Personally, I can go all day fasting with amazing mental focus that also allows my body to heal while reducing the pain and inflammation. And as you feel better physically, you're able to mentally increase your frequency or vibration and become a better version of yourself. Secondly, the accelerodyne iodide. Iodine is truly the wild card in supporting the immune system. It's not only anti-inflammatory, but it also antibacterial and antiviral, which we all need right now, antifungal, antimicrobial, antiseptic, antioxidant, antiallergenic, antihistamine. It actually hydrates the cells without drinking water and it detoxifies the body and produces mental and physical energy. It performs a unique function known as healthy apoptosis. And what that is, is the natural death of traumatized and unhealthy cells. And there is no pathogen resistant to iodine. Iodine was used to protect people from the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic that killed over 30 million people. And all of these immune boosting benefits are in addition to its key role for the metabolism and thyroid and for the immune system. Not only that, but iodine is the most important important spiritual supplement as it relieves depression and brain fog and helps you connect to your higher self. I talk about increasing your frequency, meaning living at a higher level of awareness and spirituality. Well, the scalar frequency embedded in the accelerodyne iodine, different than any other iodine supplement, detoxes your pineal gland, which connects you to that higher self, clears the brain fog and awakens you. 
Next, the accelerated scalar silver. Not only does this silver have an alkaline pH of 8.0 or above, unlike any other silver supplement, it creates that environment that foreign pathogens may not be able to survive in. It is also programmed with bioinformational scalar technology to further help strengthen the immune system and devitalize those foreign pathogens like viruses and bacteria. And like the accelerodyne, the scalar frequencies embedded in the silver lift you to that higher state of being or the higher frequency. And like the silver, accelerated gold is the same way as it takes gold, which has been known for thousands of years to help with anxiety, depression, sleep, and increasing IQ. It takes it one step further and has the scalar frequencies embedded in the formula to enhance these healing properties. So now to the good stuff. Welcome back, L. Russ. L is the author of Confident as Fucked and the best-selling health book, The Paleo Thyroid Solution, which has helped thousands of people around the world reclaim their health, including me. Elle is also a TV and film writer and the show host of, for the popular Primal Blueprint podcast and now the co-host with Tara Garrison on Kick-Ass Life podcast, which I listen to every Wednesday when it comes out. Welcome back, Elle. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, I'm really glad you mentioned iodine. I want to just piggyback on that and say that. So I take thyroid hormone replacement. Um, so I'm not so worried about like iodine because I take the hormone, but I'm a, I'm a very active swimmer and I swim in pools and chlorine displaces iodine. So one of my hacks is, you know, a couple of times a week, I will take iodine, you know, before swimming. And again, just to offset any potential there. Um, and then just also agreeing with what you had to say about it. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So if you're a swimmer out there, uh, whether you take thyroid hormone or not, you might want to think about that as a hack. Yeah. Well, not just a swimmer. I mean, I can smell the chlorine out of my shower water. And if you don't have shower strong filters, filters, yep. Right. So you can run and we have really great filters in our house, or at least I think they are, but I can still smell it. And sometimes I can smell when I take the iodine, I can actually smell that chlorine come out of my pores. So it's in there. It's in all of us. Well, I wanted to start, I know we've talked before about the details of thyroid health, and we've also talked about confidence, the two topics you're experts in, which I have recommended your books to everyone. And and your confident book is one that I think teenagers need to listen to or listen to or read. Um, it's one that I'm having my kids read. So I thought today we could talk about thyroid health and the integral part it has on the whole endocrine system, not just for weight issues, but for the immune system, which we all are concerned about. Um, and I'm seeing it in my own house where I've seen my thyroid low, I'm feeling somewhat depressed and my mental and spiritual energy are vibrating at a very low frequency. And so with that, then my confidence is, is compromised and how it's your physical, mental and spiritual bodies are so intertwined. So why don't we start with the thyroid and how it affects the immune system, which is something that's on everybody's mind at the moment. Well, any state of disease will affect the immune system, but hypothyroidism is really inflammation, you know, and accelerated glycation at, at, at its, at a, at a minimum, right? So as you're, you're, you're sort of in a slowly dying kind of state, a, a disease state, things lower, all of the hormones get thrown off, all of the protective things, you know, all of the processes, the detoxing pathways, everything will go off if the thyroid is off. So, so that's just for standard hypothyroidism for people that don't have Hashimoto's. But for example, if you have Hashimoto's and your antibodies are really high right now, then yeah, you are more compromised than most people. And this is not a good scenario for you. So the goal is to get those antibodies down to the lowest and or undetectable levels. And if you can't uh, quickly, or you want some assistance, then there are things that functional doctors use like low dose naltrexone at night, LDN, um, and that can really help lower antibodies. But that is the goal because antibodies equal inflammation, equal be getting more problems and equal, uh oh, you get COVID, you have to go to the hospital, there's going to be problems when your immune system is already haywire. So when you're hypothyroid and it's untreated, you often get your immune system, you often get more colds, you're susceptible to things. Um, and not to mention, you know, yes, your confidence is down, but that would be down with anyone struggling with a health issue. It could even be a back problem that kills a confidence too. If you can't walk around and you're in pain all day, 
that is, that is, it's really, really tough to access happy chemicals and be positive. And so it takes extra work and attention and intention to do so. Um, but on this note of, you know, uh, health issues and uh, mindset and all that kind of stuff, the best thing you can do for mindset is to get your health in order, whatever that may be. Solving rheumatoid arthritis, solving hypothyroidism, can't what whatever you're going through. Because uh, when you're hypothyroid, you have low T3, and we have more receptors in our brain than anywhere else for that. And that is responsible for all of the, you know, wonderful transmitters and all these neurochemicals that get absolutely thrown off. And so it's interesting because when people start to let's say they have to take thyroid hormone replacement to be better they as they as they go up the 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 uh, you know, up the ladder of of getting to their optimal dose, because just as a side note, you can never just throw somebody like a ton of thyroid medication right off the bat. You have to kind of let it build up and you kind of do it in a conservative way. And so over this time, which could be three months, six months, people will call and they'll be like, does this stuff make you happy? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it does. It's not a drug of abuse. You know what I mean? You can't be a normal person and take it. It probably won't make you happy. But when you are missing that from your brain, everything is affected. You have a, when you're hypothyroid, you have a sense of general malaise. Yeah. You know, you're really unmotivated. You know, I was talking to a woman and her daughter who both have hypothyroidism issues. The daughter's labs were absolutely terrible. Like there's no way she wasn't feeling bad. And she was a little bit in denial about it because she had gotten used to it, which a lot of people do. And she was like, well, and then her mom's like, well, she likes to sleep a lot. She's like, well, I just like sleeping. And I'm like, there you go. There you go. That's something where you're so in it. You think like, well, I'm just, I like that's a problem. If you're sleeping all the time, that's a problem. It's also when I was in high school and really depressed, I slept all the time. I had the opposite of what people with depression sometimes have, which is insomnia. They can't go to bed. I wanted to sleep all the time to get away from reality. I perhaps had a hypothyroid situation. I didn't even know back then. That's very likely. Um, but I remember, and it was a real problem, and I ended up getting kicked out of high school for it because I just, I slept on the bus on the way home. I wanted to go home and sleep and take a nap. I mean, I was just like always wanted to sleep. And when you are like that, you don't want to be a part of society. You don't really want to hang out with friends and stuff like that. You're just looking forward to all your free time to go sleeping. That is a sign. You know, that is a sign. And that's a low level of interest in life. That's a low level of motivation and general malaise. But sometimes if you've been feeling that for a while or it's been so long since you haven't, it becomes a normal way, you know? So, so again, you got to check yourself. If you really aren't up all day, happy and, you know, motivated and brain sharp, then there's something to be done there. Yeah. And that you're touching on something that Joe Dispenza, I brought this up to my kids yeah. uh, this week because I said, okay, so you are in a bad mood, quote unquote, for a day. Well, if you keep that mood for two weeks, it becomes a temperament. If you keep it for months, then it becomes your personality. And you don't want to stay in that state for much longer than a day or two. And you really need to act on it. Okay, something is wrong. If I don't want to get out of bed because I want the day just to disappear, something is wrong. You want to be able to have the energy mentally, physically, and and emotionally to go out and to engage and to prosper and to grow and become a better version of yourself every day. Now, of course, there are days where it's like, oh, I just don't have the energy. But then that should not stay. That should not be a, a permanent thing more than right. a day or two, right? Absolutely. And it's, it's really hard right now because we're all in the state of we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know when quarantine is going to end. The global environment is so difficult. And that's why I think this conversation is so important right now because it is even harder to keep that stress level down. And so I want to talk about stress and its effect on the thyroid because what people don't understand, they think it's all in their heads. Like my energy's low because I'm stressed. Well, no, there's a physical chemical reaction going on with your cortisol levels and how it's affecting your thyroid hormones. So let's talk a little bit about stress on the thyroid. So a lot of people, so I actually just literally happened the other day. I had a client who's young, like 23. She has uh, terrible Hashimoto's antibodies and a reverse T3 issue. Now the reverse T3 issue is often stress. So I asked her, I'm like, what's been going on? Turns out she had a really, really rough year, uh, had a very a person close to her. She felt obligated to help who had major surgery. Uh, uh, it was just a very stressful time. And, um, 
when you are really stressed out and you're in fight or flight mode, aside from what that's doing to your adrenals with cortisol, it's also sending a message to your thyroid that you are not safe, that you are in trouble. And uh, so it it can go haywire and start to dial back, uh, you know, the conversion of T4 to T3 and give you a reverse T3 problem. So it doesn't matter if you're going through a messy divorce and, you know, that's that's the cause. Or if you're in medical school and you're up all night, it doesn't really matter what the quote stress is, but it would behoove everybody because it's this look, this shiz is real. Okay, this is real. The effects of stress on our bodies are real. Biology of belief, there's a million books about it. So many of it, so much of it has been, that's why, you know, laughter is so healing, <laughs> you know, and it, it's, it's, so, it's so obvious, I think, to us all. So it does behoove us to really get into mindset work. And I would say that one of the toughest things is if you're going through something right now where you are, you're suffering, you know, from an issue and you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to get better. This is the time in my book, Confident as F, to start to limit your uh, interactions with downers, you yes. know, with people that are going to be like, well, I don't know. I guess that, you know, th there's going to be downers about your health thing. There's going to be like, well, I don't know. You know, my doctor says this, or, well, you know what? Someone said to me one time after I went to a ton of doctors, they were like, well, you know, one of these days you're just going to have to listen to one of these doctors. And I'm like, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have people even challenging you and in getting into your business or thinking you're a hypochondriac or making some kind of comment or an eye roll about your situation. Cause maybe they're tired of hearing of it. Maybe cause you've gone to 50 doctors and you're trying to figure it out and they think you're a hypochondriac. Stay away from those people. Do not share your health journey with them. Either get a coach, get a friend, someone you can talk to about it. Because here's what happens. Let's say you're on a journey where, like, for example, there's a lot of people who already know this, but when you have Hashimoto's, we know for sure that gluten, um, I mean, you know, paleo diet is obviously grain-free and gluten-free, but gluten particularly really ignites the antibody. So you have to remove it. And um, anyway, people know the dietary, you know, parts of it, but, and those are very, very important, but then they'll do that and they're not doing the mindset stuff as well. You have to do both. So what I told someone too was her parents uh, were very like, oh, whatever, or, you know, like they, they didn't believe in what she's doing. Stop trying to convince people. You're going to learn along your journey things that are going to make you better. Do not try to convince it to anyone else. It's a losing game. I've been in this business for a while now. I can't even convince people close to me of things that later, a year later, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, I guess you were right. You're like, oh my gosh, I, I told you that. I, I told you this a year ago, you could have suffered less, but you didn't. No one's going to listen. They're going to do their own thing. They're going to be ready for it when they're ready for it. So what that does is now you have created a contentious argument with your parents or friends or whatever it is over whatever you're doing. That's just increasing the stress of the thing. So just stop sharing it with people that don't get it. And if people challenge you like, oh, really? Like, do you think not eating that pasta is actually going to help your rheumatoid arthritis? Okay. Like whatever kind of snide remarks you get, don't engage, get out. It's a conversation. It's only going to fuel your stress. So that's also part of being confident is, you know, confident people try to engage as little as possible in these things called conversations, which are conversations that go nowhere. They only increase the stress levels of everyone involved. So that's a lot of the advice that I sometimes give to my clients, my thyroid ones is, or even the life coaching ones, which is don't share your exciting little project you're working on with the downers in your life. In yeah. fact, it's probably better to wait till you're done if you've never done something other than the job that you're doing. Just do it. You don't need to inform because what you're doing is just what you're hoping for when you're sharing this is that you're going to get approval or that they're going to have, you know, they're going to give you a kind of reaction you want and it backfires. It often backfires. So you got to do this either like with yourself, a small group of people, one friend, a coach, keep it to yourself until you're better. And then, you know, then you can sit, shout from the rooftops, right? Or then you can answer questions if people want to know. Um, to this day, you know, just because I'm an ancestral health expert, I'll have some random friend from, you know, years ago who will find out what I'm doing now and like text me and be like, hey, what's this paleo thing? Do you think I'm going to spend an hour sitting there telling them what it is? I don't even know if they're serious about doing it. I'm not going to waste my time. I don't know how interested they are. If I spend an hour with them trying to lecture and convince them and then they do, don't do anything, it's going to feel like a waste, right? So I just refer them to things. If people get serious over time and they really want to talk to me in depth about it, that's cool. But you cannot force other people to do things, you know, obviously. And I think this, this is just a very big problem. I don't know if you've noticed it with people, but it's just true when you're going through a health journey, especially if you're getting better, you're discovering new things, you want to share it and it it gets it, it backfires on you it's like you get a negative response from people these people don't know what they're talking about they're, they're still listening to uninformed doctors let them go do their thing lecture and teach them later when you're better for right now it's too stressful avoid the conversations
You could not be speaking my language more. I it, I think everyone in the health industry is here typically because they've overcome some of their own issues, right? Well, our family and friends from way back when have seen us when we're sick and seen us compromised. So why would they think to listen to someone like us? That was the look I got all the time. And I remember about 10 years ago, a client of mine came to me who is also in the health industry. She said, Sarah, don't waste your time on people that don't want to hear you. The people that will listen to you will come to you. And it was just so eye opening. And it was just this relief, like I my shoulders dropped and the stress went out because I then didn't felt like I didn't have to prove myself to the ones that were the closest to me, right? The family members and the friends, You're always them, <laughs> right? But then as you grow, and as you heal mentally as well, and your growth mindset improves, you start attracting these people that are fostering that growth. And then you each are feeding off of each other. And that is what's so exciting about the journey. And that's what I, where I'm at, where I am just, I love every day because I feel great. And even I'll have down days, of course, but I always know that this is not the end of my journey. I know the more I know, the more I realize I want to know, the more I realize the people that I, I get to meet in the future and I can't wait. And it's so exciting and having conversations like with you, L. I mean, it's just it's going to be the highlight of my day. I'll be skipping around the rest of the day just with energy because this is what feeds my soul, these types of conversations. Um, so we got a couple questions and one I just want to touch on. Someone asked, is iodine safe in the body? Yes, we need it. It's necessary. I'll make a caveat. I'll do one caveat on that. Sometimes people will go and look up iodine and they'll see that it's related to thyroid. They have a thyroid problem. They go get a bottle of Lugol's iodine, a very substantial amount, and they will like overdo it. Okay. You don't want to overdo iodine either. That can bring on some bad detox symptoms and actually can mess with Hashimoto. So it is about minimum effective dose and being conservative. I just want to throw that out there because a lot of people will see that it's related to thyroid. And also on that note, getting your selenium idealized mm -hmm. can help with the iodine, right? So uh, it, it sort of like up levels it. So I just wanted to just stop yeah. in there. No. Absolutely. Yes, it's, yes, it's safe, but just with like don't copious amounts of dosing. Yeah. Yeah. The other question is, how do we know who to listen to? Like what, what, what medical people, what, who in our world, how do we know that they're the ones to listen to? Ooh, that's a really tough one. So um, this is how I would put it. Not all doctors are worth their weight, obviously. The best people that know the most about most medical topics are usually functional, truly integrative functional medicine doctors. What does functional medicine mean? It really, they're going through extra training. They've gone above and beyond. Often these doctors are not taking insurance, which means they are not dictated by the 15 minutes or a, a, they can test whatever they want. They can do whatever they want because they're not beholden to anybody, which is what you want in a doctor who's, who's not afraid of an insurance company. And so what functional doctors are looking at is the entire piece. Western doctors, your HMO, your PPO doctor, you go to them for 15 minutes, they're, you are looking for a pill or a prescription. If you have a symptom, they're going to treat the symptom. And as we've talked about before on your show, when you have hypothyroidism or lots of other disorders, you have lots of other symptoms. So you can treat the dry skin with this, you can treat the dry eyes with that, and you can treat the... You, you can patchwork all you want, but if you never got to the root. So functional doctors are great at investigating the entire body, all of its systems, doing in-depth evaluation on you. They often spend two hours with you. You get a life overhaul with a functional doctor. Now, they're not all worth their weight. I have literally sat next to doctors on panels at speaking events, and they have said something wrong about thyroid. Okay. So I can't promise that every functional doctor is going to do that. Just see how long they've, they've been practicing, what their training is. Um, and it, orthomolecular medicine is another word you could type in. Um, you know, what you don't want is a doctor who's just hanging like an integrative shingle above their door, you know, that they truly are integrative. And you can see that by looking at their about page on their websites. In fact, the doctor on my book has a great resume for this. And if anyone wants to sort of compare or take a look at his like resume and see if you can find someone who matches it, it's middlepathmedicine.com, Dr. Gary Forsman in California. Just look at his about section, look at his training and go, okay, let me try to kind of find someone who might miss 
mimic that, that probably is going to be the best bet. That anti-aging doctors um, and um, I guess naturopathic doctors, I would say, are all sort of in the same sphere. But I hear all too often that a lot of them don't know what they're talking about in certain arenas. I think the most important thing is you want a doctor who's a geek, who loves this stuff, who's like, ooh, let me try to figure this out. Because that's the problem with doctors. They were like that in, 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 you know, medical school. And then they lost it. You want a doctor who's still like my doctor, the doctor's website, I just mentioned on, on my book, paleo thyroid solution. Dr. Forsman is researching coronavirus every day. The guy's still geeking out on this stuff. You know, he's really on top of it. That's who you want. You also want a doctor who's going to listen to you, who, when you bring in a book or an article, you might go, Hey, what do you think of this? I have had done that to Western HMO doctors and they've gone, they've gone, I'm not going to read that. Yeah. Literally just like that have said it to me. Like, yeah. Well, then, then what kind of doctor are you? I mean, I guess you don't have to read every book a patient gives you, but I'm sitting here talking some real science here and, and you can't even say, well, let me just kind of flip through it. I'll take a look or let me, I'll read a chapter and say anything, you know? So you want a doctor who's going to listen, who's going to spend time with you um, because the standard CBC, you know, complete blood count, the standard lipid panel, the standard whatever that they take at your annual physical is not at all comprehensive. Yeah. So do yourself a favor and go get a comprehensive checkup with like a functional, truly integrative medical doctor. And um, again, there might be people that aren't MDs that are worth their weight. A lot of chiropractors know what they're talking about too with health and nutrition. Um, so, so, so it is tough. Uh, now, as far as a thyroid doctor goes, I have some resources in my free thyroid guide on my website, uh, lrust.com, and you can click that. And there's some resources on where to find the right thyroid doctor who might know what they're talking about in your state or country. Um, so, so see your vibe, like when you meet with the doctor and if you don't like them and also question them just because they're a functional doctor doesn't mean they know what they're doing. For example, there's functional integrative doctors that have told patients I know, oh my God, your heavy metals are so crazy. We have to do I IV collation with you. And another functional medicine doctor is like, you're fine. You don't need to do anything. How is that possible? Right. So I just look into like how long the person's been practicing. Right. Because that means they've gone through a lot of patients. Like, like, would you rather, you know, someone said this to me once. I used to be afraid of flying. And I sat next to a bunch of pilots one time and I was, you know, like grilling them on all these questions I had. And he said, let me ask you something. Would you rather have like a Blue Angel fly your plane or some guy who's been flying commercial flights like his whole entire life? Mm, probably the guy that's been flying the commercial flights his whole entire life, even the blue angel guys can do all these crazy tricks and stuff. Right. So that goes for the same when it comes to doctors, look at, you know, how long they've been practicing reviews, question them and challenge them when you don't know or understand, or something doesn't feel right. Um, but, but, and, and that oftentimes requires going out of pocket. If you can find a functional medicine doctor who takes insurance, that's great. But if you can't, how, what is your health worth? Most people go, no amount of money, invaluable, right? But then they don't act like that because they keep going back to the HMO doctor. And then two years goes by and then they're finally like, they're worse. And now they're like, okay. You know, it's like, it's again, it's like the family people that are like, whatever, I mean, no meal forever. And then like five years later, they're like, oh, I probably should quit grains. Or, you know, you're like, I told you five years ago, but I can't do anything but try to help you uh, the best I can. So, you know, if you're really suffering, get if the quickest way to get over that i think is working with a functional medicine doctor i don't know what are your suggestions i agree i know that your gut tells you when you need somebody if they're really if you're really connecting with them um and then the other thing is there's certain steps that i think everyone in our industry would agree on and that is get rid of the gluten possibly get rid of the dairy get go to a more ketogenic low carb paleo type um, diet, at least getting rid of the, car the processed carbs. You know, th these are things that are no brainers that even medical doctors will usually um, agree with. So start with the basics, start with the, and then, and then take it from there. And Dr. Forsman has been on our show. So you can, if you want right. to listen to him, he's yeah. been on a couple episodes on Accelerated Health Radio. We are going to take a quick uh, commercial break, Al, and we will be right back talking more about confidence and thyroid.
Welcome back to Accelerated Health Radio. I'm your host, Sarah Banta, the owner of Accelerated Health Products. And today we have Elle Russ, the well-known podcaster and author. Elle, let's talk a little bit more about diet, just the basic biohacks. If someone doesn't even want to go see a professional yet, and maybe they're just wanting to do the basic things that they could do for anybody. I know, and I've learned for myself that bio-individuality is so important. I was eating certain low-carb vegetables and that were ketogenic, and um, they were really still messing up my, my thyroid and my bloat situation and a lot of things. But I was doing all the right things until I realized that I had a compromised um, DNA situation, right? So, but there's some basic things, even without going into the DNA testing and blood tests and all that, there's some basic things that people can start doing now to, to eliminate some factors that could be causing their issues. Yeah. So, I mean, I would tell everyone to, well, it depends on how severe your issues are, but you know, regardless, start with a paleo ancestral paradigm. What does that mean? Google paleo food list and also Google whole 30, compare the both. For example, eggs are allowed in paleo primal world, but if you're having any kind of issues, that is something I would eliminate. For example, if you tested my blood, I'm not allergic to eggs. If you took a food sensitivity test, not even on there, but I do have that genetic mutation for the sulfur. Maybe. And I got issues with that. It's only through noticing that and someone calling it out on the genetics that made me go ding, ding, ding. Maybe I should quit eggs. I quit eggs for a couple of months when I reintroduced them. Oh my God, Ethiopian bloated stomach, you know, with gas everywhere, just terrible. Like, oh my God, thank God I'm not around people, that type of thing. And so do I still eat eggs? Not regularly, every now and then. Sure. I just wouldn't do it if I knew I had to be around people just in case. But again, sometimes you don't know how something affects you until you eliminate it substantially for at least a month. So I would just start off with a strict paleo whole 30 type of thing. And that might mean you start off with no butter and eggs, like whole 30 kind of calls for at first, and then maybe later introduce it. Um, and again, you know, if you can make the move to regenerative agricultured meats, like those sold from rep provisions or white oak pastures, or, you know, lots of places, grass fed, regenerative uh, meat, that that's going to be healthier. But if you can't, then you just stick to like the good food groups. The other things are things like you notice, uh, people notice a histamine intolerance. If you get bumps on your body or you're itchy, then you might need to look into, are you eating a lot of foods high in histamines? And there are things like cinnamon that are high in histamines that people don't even realize. If you have Hashimoto's, you really need to look into the autoimmune protocol. A lot of people with Hashimoto's have to take it a little bit of a step further and not even use things like uh, paprika, red colored seasonings, cinnamon, uh, nightshades, etc. So if you're an auto, if you're having an autoimmune issue, then paleo autoimmune protocol, look at a bunch of lists, compare them, test out, see how you feel. Um, and then if you're not having an autoimmune issue, but you just need to get it together, listen, there's people that have actually fixed their thyroid problems in eight weeks by just going paleo, just getting rid of offensive food oils like canola and other things. Um, and I will say this, there is a great book called No, uh, no Grain, No Pain. And uh, the, the guy who wrote that's great. He's wonderful. It's a great book. And part of what they talk about in there is that, you know, you can eat a piece of gluten or something, and then it might kind of get out of your intestines in 10, 11 days, but the inflammatory response can last up to a couple months. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to heal MS, you're trying to reverse rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's, you do have to be strict. Now, that doesn't mean that four months from now, you can't have a piece of sh deep dish Chicago pizza when you're there. Yes, enjoy. But how quickly do you want to get better? Get those antibodies down, get them to low undetectable levels, fix yourself. I think the most important thing people need to know is when they look at these food lists and they look at the things they have to eliminate, they're sitting there crying because it's like a life sentence to never enjoy life. First of all, I eat bacon burgers all the time. Like I eat so much good food, right? But it, it's not a life sentence. It's, um, it's a modified life sentence, but it's also, I mean, I have friends that have gotten their antibodies down from 400 to 25 going paleo. They'll still have a cheat every now and then. It's not going to kill anybody, but it's about get them down first, get them low, and then you can have a little fun here and there. So just know, and I think it's important for people to realize when they're going through like a strict eating protocol for a while, and they really have to watch these things, not even necessarily calories, just the food groups that they don't sit there and go, ah, this is forever. It's just kind of temporary, you know? And then in the future, maybe you go for the grain free pasta. When I eat pasta, I usually eat, well, it would be rare, but I might eat like 
rice pasta. I would eat gluten-free for sure, but I would go for the paleo pasta. It's more expensive, but I'd eat the grain-free. There's grain-free bread. There's grain-free pizza crust. There's so many things you can do. So, you know, eight years ago, maybe not, but now this stuff is all available. There's things that mimic that consistency. So I would just say, go paleo, AIP, and or Whole30. Just look at those lists and go, where do I need to throw stuff out of my cupboard? And, you know, what people don't realize is that if you got takeout from like a barbecue restaurant, their barbecue sauce has gluten in it. And almost everything has gluten in it. Soy sauce has gluten in it. You got to use tamari. So you have to look into these things. You know, I didn't know certain foods were high in histamines for a while or certain things. I didn't even know that about gluten. I was like, what? Um, absolutely hiding it in there. The other thing too is corn syrup. Get rid of it altogether. I don't care. Even relish. You're going to go get some relish for hot dogs. Get the stuff with the real sugar. Don't ever get the junk with corn syrup. You've got to look at labels and that's basic stuff. Um, so I would just say stick with an eating program. It doesn't mean you need to exercise, although that is helpful, but you can actually get it together, your metabolic health, by sitting on the couch and exercising some willpower for three weeks. After about three weeks, you won't need the willpower. Your ancestral genetic switches will flip. You'll start to be running off of fat and ketones. You won't really feel this food addiction thing, but you know it takes a month about you know of, of some good food willpower. And again, doesn't mean you have to get up and work out at a gym. I think the biggest problem, sir, with people is that when they're on and they want to do a new healthy thing, they try to do all of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to get up and go to the gym and I'm going to divorce my husband. And then I'm going to like, no, like just get the food down. If you're not a regular exerciser, don't even start. Literally, I'm giving you license to sit on the couch, but you have to sit on the couch and have welfare about what you're putting in your mouth for the next month. And that nobody doesn't have time for. Everybody has an excuse for the gym. Everybody has an excuse for like. You, there's no excuse here. It's only you. So I think that that's what makes it difficult for people. They are trying to be like a, you know, a athlete, you know, all of a sudden, and, and you don't need to do all that stuff. And that stuff can be sometimes more stressful. So get yeah. the food right first, your energy will increase. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, you know, what? I actually want to move. I want to go for a walk. Right. It will happen. It, you, no doubt you will get off the couch, but you can actually get fat adapted and lose weight by just sitting on your couch. I don't recommend it, but I mean, you can do it. So there's really no excuse. There's really no excuse to do it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I was, um, like I said, I was eating all the right things, but I found out I have, <laughs> I have not most people who don't have a great genetics for sulfur um, pathways, sulfur and the sulfur foods, which are the broccolis, the cauliflowers, the cabbage, the, the egg yolks, right? Um, I was eating them every single day. They're all low calorie. They're all ketogenic. And she said that I need to run in the opposite direction of any of those foods, including garlic, which I was eating every at every single meal. Garlic is extremely problematic for me. It didn't used to be though. And here's the thing. I used to eat garlic, like roasted garlic bulbs 20 yeah. years ago. I'd put it on bread with what I, I had no problem with it. Then next thing you know, if you cook something that was like a real, I can use a little garlic salt, but not, if you cooked a heavy garlic dish, I, and this happened to me actually last year. I was out for some Greek food. I kind of went to town on some of the tzatziki. It was really garlicky. I have to projectile vomit an hour later. Uh -huh. And and then, you know, if I eat onions or leeks, and I love leeks. I love this stuff, you guys. I love the taste of it. But then my body odor and everything, I just reek of onion. Like So, you know, again, it's just like learning over time and, and eliminating these things. Uh, yeah, garlic's a tough one. And the eggs, right, again, you know, and that was one I didn't even think about. And here's the thing, I never had a horrible reaction to eggs prior. The thing is like your body gets used to stuff after a while. So I didn't have that huge descended stomach and gas every time I ate eggs in my life. But when someone mentioned the sulfur thing to me and I really, they said, do you have a problem with eggs? I thought about it because there has been times when I've eaten eggs by, by, by themselves, no matter how they were cooked. And I had this, I didn't get sick. I didn't have any symptoms per se, other than this kind of gross feeling of just like, ah, I just want this to be digested already. Like, oh, I just can't wait for four or five hours from now. If yeah. you feel that way about any food you've eaten, eliminate that shit. <laughs> eliminate it, right? So it really was only me eliminating it for a solid like couple of months and then seeing. And this can go with anything. It can go with rice. And you'll be like, oh, I do well with rice. Do you? Eliminate it, try to reintroduce it, and then see what your body tells you. And there are different rices. Sometimes you're okay with the brown rice and the black rice or the wild rice, but not the white rice. There, yep. the 
one thing that I can say about the carnivore diet. This is something that is not sustainable for me. I know it's working well for a lot of people out there. But if you are truly in a state where you cannot figure out what to do, I think that is a, a an amazing elimination diet where then you can yes. add in a vegetable once one at a time and say, oh, my God, I really reacted negatively to that. Because the, the interesting thing is, is my DNA also said that I was OK eating nightshades and lectins which I have been um, avoiding for years. And all of a sudden I'm able to eat all these food groups again that I that fit great in my body. And I eliminated the sulfur and the oxalate. So anyways, the, the bio-individuality is really important. But and I, it goes back to the right doctor who actually yeah. understands how to take an organic acids test and a food sensitivity test and all these other uh, markers like CRP, you know, uh, omegas, uh, certain genetic components, right? Um, and and that's, that's, that's really key. And by the way, for those of you out there who've taken a 23andMe test or something like that, there's more to do there. There is the raw data you can pull from there and and put in other apps or send to other places and have them analyze these things like we're talking about to find out if you do have that sulfur issue or whatever. But obviously, and I know you've preach this too, but symptoms, right? They are our greatest teachers. Yes. Do not ignore them. I have had a friend for more than 20 years now who it, immediate reaction from eating gluten, stuffy, caught hacking every time, every yeah. single time. All of his friends have talked to him about this. We're like, how are you moving through life like this? How can you even deal with it? They've gotten so used to it that like they think this is okay. And then people around them are like, oh my God, this is awful. And it's literally just the food they're eating. And then they'll say like, well, it's the food I'm eating. And you're like, well, then why are you doing it? Now to that person having a stuffy nose and for whatever may be worth that. But here's the, here's the problem we need to see. If that's happening to your nose and things, do you see mm -hmm. that what's actually happening on the back end? What's going on in your body is not a good thing. It seems like a dumb symptom. Oh, to go away in a few hours, I'll take some Claritin. It was worth it. There's damage happening every time you do that in your body. Stop it or do it sparingly. But again, um, this is on this is all on us, right? Mouth to this is all us. We have to biohack it ourselves. No one is going to say what is right for us. There are also people that have food sensitivities to meat. Yeah. Hey man, I'm not saying everyone should be paleo and be a red meat eater, but do paleo the way that you can do it. And whether you're okay with eggs or you can do fish or you like chick, I don't care. But but again, there are people that are have sensitivities to pork and meat. Then great, that's not right for them either. Like know yourself. Don't try to force anything in your system just because someone said spinach or, you know, kale was healthy. It might not be right for you. Yeah. And if anyone is looking for that doctor, I do recommend Terry Cochran, who has been on my um, show in the wild Italian diet. She's amazing. She does take the 23 and me test. And that's um, where I found my answers. But I this ties into stress and confidence and um, the way you're moving forward, because I can tell you just switching out those vegetables, my thyroid health has improved. My energy has improved. My bloat is gone. My mental clarity is better. All of these things. I thought I was at my optimal self and now I'm at a whole nother level now just with that one little change. And so you tell me to eat cardboard if I'm going to, I'll eat it. I'll be, if, if this is how I'm going to feel, I'd much yeah. rather eat nothing or foods that aren't as exciting and feel this way versus the way I was feeling and living at a suboptimal level. Um, I know it's very stressful to, to not have the answers. Yeah. And here's the other thing too, when you're assessing and going through the medical system, you're going to need confidence. Just because someone has a Harvard degree doesn't that mean no more, they mean they know more than you. Don't don't put them on a pedestal. I've met too many Ivy League degree doctors that are clueless. Okay, then there's some that are great, I'm sure, but that doesn't mean anything. Stop bowing down and looking up and putting the health of your hands into a doctor as if they're on a pedestal. You still need they're working for you, so you do need confidence to be able to go. Well, we don't, we don't test that. Well, I'd like you to test it. You, know, you have to have confidence to speak up and challenge. I'm not saying being a jerk to these doctors, you have to be diplomatic. Sometimes I've had to be a jerk to doctors. Listen, to, you know, there's a million stories in my book about it. I've been patronized by doctors that didn't know what they were talking about. And, you know, it's, 
it's a it's a process. Um, I think one of the stories I'll relay, which I've related several times, is I went to a doctor with a patient who didn't speak English very well, and I asked them to test reverse T3. They said, no, we don't test that. That's old school. I said, well, it's pretty new school to me because I had a reverse T3 problem and I got over it. And she's like, I said, all I'm asking you to do is take a test. And this endocrinologist said to me, well, we don't test that, you know, like that's old school. And I, whatever, told her. And then she goes, well, fine, I'll test it, but I don't know how to evaluate it. And I said to her, and this is where confidence comes in. Now, this is a little snarky, but I said to her, I said, did you just patronize me for asking you to take a test that you are telling me you now know nothing about? How dare you? I would say that to anyone. I would say that to a friend. If if you said, L, do not go see the new Star Wars movie. I would be like, why is it terrible? And if you were like, I don't know, I didn't say it. I would call you out on that. I'd be like, then what the hell are you telling me not to say a thing you don't even say before? Like, what, what kind of advice is that? Right? So uh, now that got me somewhere with that patient because I was able to actually... <laughs> I think she was defeated there. She knew she got called on her ego, but you're going to need these things, right? You know, now would you go back to a doctor like that? No, but maybe that's the only one you got to work with for right now. So you have to step up and make sure like, Hey, you are still working for me. And also too, I'm the patient. And as far as the laws go with medicine, I am allowed to also choose my standard of care as well. Even if what you think I want to do is outside of it, I have that right. So you have to remind them of these things and sometimes really step up with confidence. Because when you're sick and you're low confidence and you're low self-esteem and your body's shy and you feel awful, you can have a patronizing doctor just kind of carry you along. And you do not want that because I haven't ever seen it end well. Yeah. Well, we are almost out of time, which I can't believe it. It just always goes so quickly with you. Before we go, can you give your top tips on just what you're doing to keep moving forward in these times that are so stressful physically, mentally, and spiritually for all of us and to keep that confidence up because it is hard to just keep going forward as we are not knowing where the world is going to be in a month or two months or three months. Um, and, you know, we're all feeling this collective stress, even if we're not personally stressed, there's this collective stress. What are you doing to help keep moving you forward? Avoid conversations on masks with certain friends. <laughs> no, for real. I mean, you know where certain people stand. Again, yeah. don't engage in these things. Now, I sucked into that. Look, I never watched the news in my life until I would or I would check into it when it was time to vote and look up stuff. But other than my time to vote, I didn't listen to any news, didn't want it on. Woo, I have been addicted. Like it, it took actual me going, okay, you're going to go to your DVR and you're going to not record the five shows every night on the news. You're lucky if you turn it on, you'll catch some. You can look online. No, because if you record it, then you're fat. Then now, now I'm three hours in. I've just listened to the same thing be repeated. I even got sucked into it. So it literally was me going, I need to put my foot down on myself, right? Yeah. So cancel that stuff. Watch as much comedy as you possibly can. End of story, period. I'm constantly watching comedy. Um, and, and again, so all the comedy stuff. So I look for all the comedy stuff on Instagram, Twitter, you know, I'm constantly watching stand up or funny shows. Uh, I look, I live alone and I don't have anyone to snuggle. Do you know what I mean? So it can be really lonely if you're one of those people. And I know also if you're in a household, you're like, oh, I can't wait to be alone. Right. So I get, I get both sides. I would say that this is temporary you're strong enough to survive the next couple of months. Like I, and I think I was trained for this because with hypothyroidism, I was inside all the time. I couldn't go out. I was sick. I was, so I feel like a lot of us who've suffered some health stuff, like we're, we're trained for quarantine. We're like, Oh no, no, I can do another few months of this. But for the people that haven't be like, this is just temporary guys. This is how fast has years go gone by in your life. And then get yourself on some mindset audiobooks. you know, go learn about the law of attraction, go watch videos of people who have been cured of what you're dealing with and watch those inspiring things. Um, stop looking at fights and political crap of people disagreeing with each other. Nothing gets my blood boiling more. Nothing. And this yeah. is tough because some of our colleagues and some of my colleagues, you look at stuff and you go, oh, I didn't know this was this type of person now because yeah. of their opinion on this. And now I've got a new judgment. Now I've got a new stress. Now I suddenly don't like that person. I mean, listen, avoid letting it seep in your subconscious. I literally had to cut myself off and maybe you do too. 
I agree wholeheartedly. We are almost out of time, but I want to make sure it's lrust.com where people can find you and your books and everything. Follow her on Instagram. She's so inspirational. And thank you everybody for joining us today. If I can help you with your health issues, contact me directly, Sarah at acceleratehealthproducts.com. I'm happy to put together a protocol for you. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and now Parlor under Accelerate Health Products and my YouTube channel under Accelerate Health Radio. You can also find this episode and all the episodes on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, or whatever podcast platform you subscribe to. I also do Accelerated Health Bites, where I do short informational videos and health topics and solutions that you ask about. So if you like what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button and share this with a few of your friends who may need our help. As you share my channel, it helps me help more people like you and bring more cutting edge guests to the show like Elle. Next week, we were going to be talking about all the benefits of collagen with Carol Fawcett, amazing supplement and what it does for your body. You can use coupon W4HC20 at acceleratedhealthproducts.com for all of the supplements we talked about. As you support Accelerated Health Products, I'm able to bring you this show and all the amazing guests. Thanks for joining us and have a great week. Thanks, Elle. Thank you.